Well, we finished up our homebrew CW decoder, and we got it in uh, housed in a little little box here that we had available, and it's all homebrew, and uh, we're pretty pleased with the performance. Thought we'd take a look here just at how we built this thing up. First video showed it all laid out as a as a prototype on a proto board, and we did uh, a little bit of uh, miniaturization and kind of cleaned it up, and uh, still performs about the same, but uh, looks nicer. This uh, box itself is in its prior life was some other kind of a switch and we've kind of repurposed it for a chassis for this little guy we have a four line uh, LCD display in the front as I said we purchased these on eBay for five dollars each delivered to the door pretty good price also we have a little reset button on the front and an LED that will light up to indicate when we have a signal tuned in correctly for CW decoding on the inside here we ended up with uh, little scrap piece of copper in here, this little rectangular board that we built up our um, LM567 decoder module on along with a little little small general purpose transistor driver you can see right here it's a little in this case we used a 2N2222 that basically just boosts the signal up, the in, incoming signal up enough that we can drive the uh, LM367 appropriately and it's really hard to see, it's back behind this green capacitor back about where I'm pointing here mounted uh, upside down dead bug style and uh, if you solder in the ground pin there that holds it real well and all the other pins are just soldered directly too with the various components there's only really a few few components involved to use that uh, decoder chip and the output of that chip is fed into our uh, Arduino uh, which is uh, we ended up using the uh, Arduino Nano this little guy right here it's physically small. Uh, we got those delivered uh, the last batch, a couple to the door for three dollars and uh, I guess it was four dollars, four dollars and twenty-five cents each. That's pretty hard to believe. This is actually mounted. The Nano itself is mounted on a little rubber standoff kind of a thing that we had available just to get it up off of the metal copper foil board, and it's basically just just physically a place to to mount this on the board in there. That's just glued in. That little rubber standoff is just kind of glued to the board. And then we have a few pins, uh, digital pins connected here with, with the cables. And uh, actually there's one analog pin that we're using, uh, which we'll talk about in just a minute as well. Um, the software, of course, is the uh, WB7FHC, uh, Bud Churchward software. And uh, we'll do a little demo of that uh, online live and we'll see see what we got. Back of this guy, let's take a quick look at the back. Again, this is... This chassis was used for something else, so we end up with a lot of extra holes. But basically, we have uh, an on-off switch here that we added, and here's our input voltage, anywhere from about 8 to 12 volts. We have three inputs for signals. Uh, microphone input, which is the one we use the most, a little electric microphone that can be put right up against the speaker of a radio transceiver. Uh, a little keyer in uh, jack that we can uh, plug our keyer or uh, more uh, key directly in there and monitor RCW on the display um, and also there's a, another jack here for a, a speaker a line input in case we want to take the output directly off of a speaker coming out of a rig. Things that we experimented with just a little bit was uh, to try and come up with some simple uh, uh, noise filtering that we could include in the code to, to do some upfront filtering uh, when we're live on the air signals particularly uh, in a clean environment where we're just generating test code from the computer or sending from our keyer or paddle, uh, the, the copy is almost perfect. It's great. But in the real world, if we can look over here and see our little uh, electric microphone that we just have taped up to the front of our speaker, that's, that's the method we use most of the time to pull signals off the air. And of course, real live signals are going to be uh, uh, subject to all the associated band noise. And, and uh, so that can become a problem with the code properly interpreting the the uh, CW characters. So we uh, just went to uh, the Arduino side and uh, uh, just pulled almost directly off of one of the tutorials on calibration. Uh, some simple code that that uh, uh, does a five second calibration every time the rig is reset, every time we reset the the uh, decoder box here, just like that. It does five seconds worth of sampling of whatever signal is present for maximum and minimum levels. And then we just applied a, a simple little uh, command basically in the code that says that if it's if the signal detected is below a certain level, then just ignore it completely. And uh, I think this probably helps a little bit, although it's pretty rudimentary and uh, in reality.
reality, the best way to probably uh, come up with some better noise filtering is to go with some type of an FFT algorithm that uh, there's possibilities there, I think, just from the research that we've done, although that's out of my area of expertise uh, currently, anyway, until we do some more study on that. One other thing I wanted to point out uh, was that uh, the bezel that we... Uh, that we have around our little guy here, this little this little bezel, uh, is actually just made out of uh, uh, dollar store uh, cheap paper plates that were black in color, kind of have a shiny surface on them. I got one here. We bought a whole pack of these for a dollar, I think. Looks like this. Easy to cut. They're white on the back, but uh, that's that uh, kind of flat. Uh, or kind of uh, sort of a shiny uh, look to it that's easy to cut and, and uh, trace around and cut and so we've used that that type of uh, bevel or bezel uh, for uh, several of our projects that use the uh, little LCD displays. If you look close you can tell that's one of the areas that we continue to have uh, major uh, dysfunction in when we're doing any type of home building home brewing is, uh, is uh, coming up with a way to cut rectangular holes and make them neat and accurate. I usually use a Dremel tool, but uh, uh, it's just really difficult to get a nice looking perfectly shaped hole, so we use some type of a bezel, and this one works well to kind of clean it up at the end and make it look a little prettier. Total cost on this guy, uh, probably, let me go ahead and reset this again, the total cost on parts probably about $15 if you have some kind of a junk box uh, for the chassis, just a few small odds and ends, but it's mostly the display and uh, and the little uh, the nano itself about ten bucks in those two components and then about five dollars in other small small pieces so it's a pretty cheap uh, pretty cheap way to go one of the other uh, things that we have envisioned that we might look at going down the road is uh, adding a, a real-time clock uh, to this guy uh, with another push button on the front that we could cycle through its choices but uh, and actually uh, just pick the clock itself so we could have a most of the time be a real-time clock and we wanted to switch over to the uh, CW decoding function, we could just have a one push button option to do that. And uh, you can, uh, those real time clock modules are out there uh, really cheap these days, three bucks a piece, something like that, and pretty easy to incorporate into the uh, setup inside. So that's something we're looking at maybe down the road. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, we'll do a little small chunk of video with some live uh, CW off the air here. I think we'll use 20 meters, find a signal, and uh, see how well we do with this configuration off the air, and then uh, and that will probably wrap it for this video.